afternoon all welcome to report out i'm going to get us started um I'm sure paul will be here as soon as he can but i also am pretty confident he wouldn't be upset if we made a start in his absence so welcome to report out today we've got a couple of teams presenting and um, we're going to open with the uh, 30 day report out from the rpiw between um this anesthesia uh abdominal medicine surgery and specifically the hpv team who've been looking at improving their day surgery, so that's David Beavers. So I'm going to pass across to the team there to take us through uh, successes, challenges and updates for 30 days. Thanks very much. Uh, my name is Emily. I am the business manager for HPV um, and we are here today obviously to report out our 30 days since our RPIW event. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here to feedback on our data and what we captured. So when we originally started this, our start on time was coming in at a baseline of 59% and that was captured over 11 lists. During our RPIW, we improved this and since then we've captured a further 10 lists and increased by 11%. So we are now at 70% on average for our starting on time in David Beavers. Our next quantum was the finishing on time, so ultimately finishing early, um, list that finished before 11.45 for a morning session and finishing before 4.30 for an all-day session. Our baseline when we started this process was at 38.5%, um, so it was quite high. Over the last 10 lists, we have managed to reduce that down to now only 10%, giving us a reduction of 28.5% across the board for our early finishes in our theatre lists. We also looked at utilisation. Um, our baseline prior to the event was 69.8, and with the implications that we made, we've managed to up that by 17.1%, giving us a total of 86.9% across the back board. So not only hitting trust target, but raising to get to that desired 100% um, target, which is where we would like to be in the coming weeks and months. Um, the value add for our for our um, RPIW was how we moved patients through the pathway, how we made sure that while they were with us in David Beavers, they had the best experience and we utilised the time as best as that we could. Our baseline for this was 54.7%. Again, we have increased by 13%. So we now stand at a really solid 67% as that is patients arriving to David Beavers and moving on to the next step, not having to wait around and just really utilising the best of our space. Um, our morale, so our staff feedback was really strong to begin with um, at 80%, but I'm really pleased to share that we are now at 100% for staff feedback, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and similarly, our patients, the patient feedback that we've reached out and had has been at 100%. Patients feel that they are in control of their pathway, they know what to expect, and they're moving through really, really swiftly. So it's been an overall success in the last 30 days. Next slide, please. Um, hi, my name is Claire Elliott. I'm the business manager for Theatres and Anesthesia. So during the RPIW, we put some tests of change to help with the flow of the first patients in David Beavers on a morning and keeping the momentum going throughout the day. So the first test of change was adding more computers to an unused room in David Beavers. That This has had a fantastic effect with the flow of patients on the morning and is now used by the medical teams every day. They've now also opened another door to the room to make it easier for access for the clinicians. Um, next was the admission pods. These are the pods which were put up in COVID times. And we utilise these in the RPIW week to reduce the amount of travel for the patients and the staff, implementing a checklist on the doors so we could see when the patients had been seen by all the different specialities and areas. Um, this has worked really well since the RPIW and we've also had a work approved for three more pods to be built. The only issue that the team have found is that some patients have complained that it's been very cold um, in that area, but the unit is waiting for new windows to be made, so that should hopeful, hopefully fix that problem. Um, iP iPads were implemented in the theatre areas to help with patient flow and has worked really well. We've since had some more iPads delivered to help um, keep this going. Works underway with IT to understand if we can have the theatre management system added to the iPads. That will help um, the accurate and timely data entry for the different steps of the patient's journey. 
Um, the calls were implemented on a morning between theatres and, and the admissions ward to highlight the, any changes to the list order, which may cause delays to the list getting started. And also a call when the surgeon was closing the patient to tell the ward that they will be coming for the next patient soon. These are still working well. The team have put an extra member of staff in the pre-wait to coordinate the first few hours on a morning. And we've also now received a new Wi-Fi phone, which will um, allow more, more flexibility for the calls with the team. Um, and the last change was um, that we implemented was a huddle twice a day between theatres and the ward. There's a short pro forma of questions to go through to make sure that the meeting is short and snappy and it's helping really well with communication between the areas. Next slide, please. So looking forward, these are our next steps that we would like to implement. So we have meetings booked in um, with our execs to look at some of the car parts ideas that we discussed during the week and see what else we can challenge ourselves to improve across the coming months. Um, we're also now looking at expanding this externally outside of just HPB. We've actually got a meeting booked in next week with urologists to implement all the skills and the lessons that we've learned and try and now channel the streamlining through urology and improve utilisation um, across the board. We've also, to keep up collaboration between teams, put in monthly meetings during the dedicated audit time. So this gives us all a safe space to really reflect on the things that we've done and absolutely celebrate our successes. Um, and ultimately, this is now widened. So as you can see, we've got that urology meeting in, and I don't think there's no barriers in place for us expanding this across all other surgical services um, with, across different CSUs. Uh, and I think that's the end of our slides for today. So thank you very much. Thanks very much. And just to acknowledge um, both of you stepping in to deliver that report out at fairly short notice on behalf of the team, which wasn't originally in the thing you signed up to. So I'm just going to acknowledge that. Thank you very much. Um, maybe a bit easier given the green scores across your uh, progress report there and some some knowing smiles about the difference it makes. I can see um, since Sol has got a hand up, I'm just going to indulge uh, one comment question before we, we do offer to the next presentation. We tend to hold things to the end, but because I'm driving the show today, I'm going to bend the rules. Um, Son Solis, because I know you've been fundamental to this. Just a quick comment. It, it, it is just to say thank you very much, because I'm one of the process owners, but from the clinical side of the staff, it's been a lot of pressure this week due to clinical phase in pressure and the staff sickness. So thank you so much, Emily and Claire, for stepping up. I was really, really relieved for that and great results. I mean, it was a fantastic experience. Thanks on solos. Yeah, uh, um, I think that, you know, really great example of uh, teamwork as well. That isn't it? Um, people stepping up to to support each other across the team. So, uh, yeah, thanks again to both of you. OK, um, I'm going to move us on. I I've spotted Jenny on the call, so I'm going to just do a quick segue as well. Jenny, um, if you wouldn't mind um, doing the closing comment Q&A, be super grateful, I think. Uh, give you a prep of that. Uh, otherwise, I think I'm coming to Kathleen. Um, because we're going to get an update on um, the care bags. I think this is an ED, but something that we've heard about before and um, was a pilot. And I'm hoping Kathleen's coming back to tell us about where we've got to so far. There she is. Thanks. Over yeah. to you. Hello. Um, so I am going to do the sharing of the presentation, I think, because there's some. Anyways, I'll share my screen. <laughs> so hello. Um, my name is Kathleen. I'm the Quality Improvement Clinician for the Learning Disability and Autism Team. And as Jimmy says, um, I'm presenting about the acute care bags today, which I did present pre-launch when we were just doing the pilot of it. So, yes, this is a bit of an update. Um, so just to give you a bit of background um, for those who haven't ever heard of them, which probably is none of you because I talk about them nonstop to everybody. Um, so they are acute care bags for learning disability and autism and autistic patients. Um, back in January 2020, we could see from the data that our reattendance rates in ED were very high and um, showed quite a large health inequality. So we did an audit of our patients to find out why. Um, and unsurprisingly, it was that our patients didn't feel they could manage in the environment. They really struggled um, with the environment. And that led to them leaving before assessment and treatment. So they'd come in stressed, unwell, unprepared, um, and the unpredictable nature, the noises, the lights, the weights, and the smells, all of it just led to sensory overload and people not coping. So 
the idea was that we would offer every patient with a learning disability or autism diagnosis a care bag, which is a tote bag that has a range of items in to help people manage their own sensory needs. Um, the bag is single use and it's patient held, so it doesn't matter where they are in department and what stage of that journey they're at, they will have the bag with them. So the aim was to give rapid access to reasonable adjustments 24 seven. Um, we as a team provide a five day service. Uh, we're not out of hours, so this was to cover kind of that. Well, the whole period. Um, it was also to help increase staff awareness and acceptance of patients with learning disability and autistic patients, improve the patient experience um, and improve the patient outcomes. So reduce the reattendance rate and promote the get it, get it right first time approach. So we partnered with um, a charity partner called Giving World, who have got a, a wealth of experience in providing personal care packs, um, and they have done some research to show the impact of personal care packs, um, that basically most staff felt that they improved the care they were giving and um, patients appreciate them. So we use the Leeds Way value to build the project. Um, everything about the project was co-produced with people with lived experience from the design of the bag to what went in the bag to the risk assessments. Um, and the whole idea really is to empower the patient to manage their own needs. What's in the bag? This is just a little picture of everything that's in the bag, um, but they contain sensory items so each bag's got an eye mask, noise cancelling, headphones. Um, there's clinical information in there. So each bag contains two patient information leaflets in easy read, accessible format. Um, one about welcome to the hospital, who you might meet, what we might do, and then follows all the national patient safety um, standards. So asking people about slips, trips, falls, weight loss, swallowing problems, any allergies, things like that. And then the other one is our team leaflet, so how to refer to us and what support's available. Then there's some occupation, distraction items, so fidget gadgets, colouring book, pencils, um, just to help manage the weights and the interventions. And then each bag contains a little tag on it that prompts the department to refer to our team. We will then track that patient's journey and make sure they've got the right PAS alerts in place, electronic alerts in place, um, and that they've all been offered a health passport and reasonable adjustment care plan. So what are the outcomes in Leeds? So we are now into our third year of the project. Um, because of the successful pilot, we have managed to gain ongoing funding each year, which has allowed us to expand the project. And it's now in both adult and peds emergency department. It's in all our acute admitting areas. So surgical assessment, SDEC, um, gynae assessment, oncology assessment, eye casualty. Um, we have given out over 2,000 bags and we're just putting in our next order for another 2,000 bags. Over 30% of our patient attendances in ED are given a bag. Um, lots are offered. Some people don't want them. Some people have already got them. Some people have brought their own sensory, need, sensory items in. So we knew that we wouldn't be giving out the bags to 100%. Um, but even with 30% having a bag, we're seeing really good results. 75% um, of the bags are going out appropriately. Um, lots, the, the inappropriate ones are people that don't have a definite diagnosis of learning disability and autism. Most of those are people await an assessment for autism um, or mental health or dementia patients. And actually they've, they've benefited from it. So we always knew there was going to be a risk that they'd go out to patients that didn't have a definite diagnosis. And that's kind of an accepted risk because people benefit from them and it's OK. Um, so we've had 98 percent positive feedback. So we've widened the scope um, year on year. We're seeing a reduction in the health inequality gap that we were measuring on, which is the reattendance rate. Um, they've been recommended as good practice in a safeguarding adult review promoted by NHS England and NHS Hope, which is their patient experience network. They've actually created a film about them. Um, which they promote nationally. Um, Leeds Hospitals Charity are using the project as kind of one of their 
oh, I can't think of the word. Anyways, they've made a film to promote themselves via this project with local media. Um, they've been highly commended at the National Learned Disability Awards and runner up at the Patient Experience National Awards this year. And here is the lovely graphs to show you um, some of the results. Cows um, Datex concerns have reduced on both sites. The emergency and patient readmission rates, the health inequality gap is, is reducing. And the one that we like is the seven day reattender rate, which is at the bottom, which you can see has steadily grew from 2019 through the pandemic. And then in 2022, when we introduced the bags, it started on its downward trend. And it's actually gone further down than that now. Um, I think we're at about 13% reattendance and general populations at about 9, 10. So general population steadily going up, whereas we're coming down. Then. Kathleen, we can grab the uh, link and put it in the chat as well as put it out with the comms so if it's not the agent. Of the care bag I received during my visit yeah. to Amy yesterday. You are my hero right now. It made such a huge, huge difference. I've just got back from 10 hours in A&E at St James's, which was really tough. However, this made it a million times better. An autism care bag. Oh my God, this is seriously amazing and helped so much. It contained ear defenders, which blocked out the beeping, the voices and the unpleasant sounds of other poorly people. An eye mask, which helped so much. It blocked out the vicious light and put me into the calming, soothing dark so I could rest, breathe through the pain and get some sleep. A stress ball, a popper and a chew ring. I held on to the stress ball for the whole 10 hours. The variety of things in the bag meant that there was something that worked for me. A colouring book, not a kid's one, or one with just blanks to colour, but with pieces of art to copy, with suggestions of colour matching and techniques to try. Beautifully detailed for my detailed focused brain and not patronising, but something that was very needed, a very needed escape and distraction. Easy read information and booklets in shutdown or overwhelming or pain. These were so much more accessible for me. There was image based information which helped. The bag itself, the fabric and smooth label. The label was so soothing to touch. So what were the effects of this for me? I could rest. I felt loads calmer. The instant I put the eye mask on really helped. My migraines didn't get triggered by stress. I did not melt down or shout. I didn't get triggered to throw up when hearing others doing this. I was occupied for periods of time so my husband could rest a bit more than usual. I still had a big crying can't cope episode, but at about nine hours in when I'd finally got seen, I could speak. I wasn't so exhausted or traumatised or overwhelmed that I was non-verbal. I could describe what was happening. I could respond to questions and I could say what I needed. I could stay in the department long enough to get seen and treated. I could instead of couldn't, which is huge progress. It does go on a little bit longer, but. I don't think we've got time to listen, but I just think it's really powerful to hear how every every little bit of the bag made a made a difference for somebody and meant that they could and and the fact they were there for ten hours as well and still could rather than couldn't. Um, so the bags are rapidly spreading. So our partner charity, Giving World, have said that it's the fastest grown innovation that they've ever worked with. Nationally, um, over 9,000 bags have been supplied to over 25 NHS trusts, um, plus a community dental service, plus 12. Um, the ICB in the North East are trialling them in 12 primary care settings. Um, and we have got several more trusts preparing to launch the initiative this year. NHS Wales are currently in talks to roll out across all their acute trusts in Wales. So what's next for us? So nationwide promotion via NHS England. Um, 
we are looking at ways we can do waste reduction with them. We've already brought the cost down from £23 per bag to £21. Um, and that's essentially by having so many more trusts and so many more people that we're doing, we're bulking everyone's orders together. So we've got much stronger buying power. So every trust uses the same bag, the same contents, everything from us. Um, and we are now working with them to see if we can just make a national bag. Um, ours have our logos on and our hospital charity and our leaflets contain our local information. So we're working out if there's a way that we can make a, a, a national bag. So we've made um, one of the leaflets a national de-branded, just NHS leaflet, and we're in talks at how we can share that with the partners and share that nationally. Um, we're looking at whether or not we could do a research project into them or um, some kind of publication. And we want to work out how we can secure long term funding to ensure sustainability rather than year on year having to do grant applications. Along with the bags, we also do a lot of work in the acute areas to promote how else we can help to get it right first time. So talking about <clears throat> looking for health passports on electronic records. Reviewing any advanced care planning decisions, respect. Um, checking on our ICE tab where we do all of our kind of our requesting for bloods or tests to see if the GP have requested any and there's anything outstanding that we can do while somebody's in. And then we are always creating and prom promoting more easy read and accessible information um, for people. And that's me done. So thank you for listening. Oh, thank, thanks, Kathleen. I mean, just uh, it's a fantastic project. And I, I earlier in the uh, the presentation, you were talking about the, the risk of giving them to people who didn't have a diagnosis. I don't think that's a risk. No. Goodness sake, you know, we're to, we, it's about patient benefit, isn't it? So if we're benefiting our patients, then that's a good thing. We should do it. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's a fantastic initiative. Thank you. Um, apologies, I was I was uh, a little late arriving. I didn't know I'd been uh, lined up to do the the initial intro. So those of you who don't know me, I'm Paul Jones. I'm the Chief Digital Information Officer here at the Trust. Um, we've got literally a minute or so for questions. I, I did see there was a hand up earlier, but um, it seems to have gone down. I didn't make a note. If anybody has got any questions, uh, Jenny. Um. I'm really sorry. I missed most of the first presentation, but I'll I'll I'll. I'll watch it back, I promise. Um, I've just thought, Kathleen, what you've just described, the scaling up was phenomenal. But the bit I, w I really liked, actually, more importantly, was that was your co-production. Can you just say a little bit more about how you did that? So, um, yeah, it was brilliant. So we have and the Trust have always supported us to have um, we partner with our Get Me Better Champions more recently, changed the name to Patient Partner Champions. Um, and they are a group of adults with learning disability and they help with all of our service improvement. Um, and yeah, we co-produce everything we do. But with the bags, we actually went wider than that. So they did help co-produce. We went through everything that should be in it, shouldn't be in it. We went through a list of sort of 30 objects and, and narrowed it down and risk assessed all of them with them. But um, we used our social media platform, which we get really good engagement on, to put it out there to say what would people want in the bags, what would they want to see? And we ran a competition to design the bag. So it was actually a patient that designed the picture on the front. Glad That's I am. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. And, and, and the feedback you got about the the bag itself having a, a sensory yeah. effect to it, I thought, thought was really interesting. Lovely. Look, we're timed out. I mean, another fantastic report out. Um, yeah, apologies, I, I like Jenny and Mr most of the first presentation but I got some feedback uh, in the margins off, off Jimmy who explained how impactful it, it had been and obviously seeing Kathleen's another impactful presentation. Um, we'll all be back again here next week so feel free to join and uh, we'll see you at another report time and have a lovely rest of your Friday. Take care everyone.